Hey everyone, I'm Sue and welcome back for another episode of Does This Notion Really Work? And in today's episode, I'm going to be talking to you about Quilter's Paradise, Slit and Sew Method Templates. The president of Quilter's Paradise is Sue Mazera. Sue's trademarked brand, Cut Right, encompasses lots of different laser cut notions, tools, templates, and now, of course, the slit and sew template method. Sue and her husband, Mark, are both engineers who spent many years in the high-end telecommunications industry. And not only that, they were awarded several patents for their work. The slit and sew methods were introduced early fall 2018, and they continue to solve the problem of taking two different curves and putting them together perfectly every single time. So without further ado, let me show you what the slit and sew method is, and I'm gonna even demonstrate how to use the templates. The slit and sew that I decided to get was the six inch clamshell. It comes in a simple plastic package and it comes with some instructions and inside is a little gripper thing that you're going to want to use a little bit later. The booklet is wonderful, has all the instructions on how to do it. This particular one has two pieces of template and there is a paper backing that you are going to want to remove and once you get rid of both the pieces then you can just discard that paper backing. There are two pieces, A and B. Let's go ahead and take a look at them on this cutting mat. Inside your instructions, it'll tell you that you wanna put that gripper stuff on the wrong side of those templates. So cut it up into like quarter inch little pieces and then you can peel off the backing of the gripper stuff and you can go ahead and adhere it to the back of the ruler. The instructions will show you right where to do it, so just follow them depending on which of the slit and sew templates you decide to get. What's really cool is this stuff really does stick, so it's great with your ruler and it'll work with several layers of material too. What's cool is that the six inch will work with a 10 inch block and you're gonna wanna use um, your rotary cutter, it depends on which size. I only had a 45 millimeter, an 18 millimeter, and a pair of scissors. You also might need a marking pen depending on which method you choose to cut and mark the little slits. So for the first one, I'm gonna go ahead and try the 45 millimeter rotary cutter. I thought I would go ahead and give all the different options a try I have to say, after working with the 45 millimeter, I felt like it was a little clunky, so I went ahead and switched over to my 18 millimeter rotary cutter. The instructions suggest that you can also use a 20 or 28 millimeter, I just didn't have that. I really have to say that this was my favorite method, using the smaller rotary cutter, I felt like I could get around the curves really easily. Now you're going to need to go ahead and cut your slits. Again, you can try all three of these methods. I'm going to go ahead and try each method in the different slits. You want to go from the inside out with the rotary cutter. So I tried with the larger and then the smaller. And then the last method you could try is simply just using a marking pen and using the slit. Just be really careful that you don't go past that quarter of an inch because that's the idea. It's really kind of like an eighth of an inch. You'll see that my one that I cut with scissors right there is a little bit deeper. So just be really careful of that. So go ahead and mark and cut the slits however you find that you like the best. Um, I ended up liking the small rotary cutter the best. And at the very center bottom, you'll notice that there's only one slit at the very bottom. And that's just because if there was a slit on both sides, it would really weaken the template. So go ahead and flip it and mark it. This is another method that I just felt like might work depending on your workspace and maybe you're like on the go and you can take the little templates and trace around them. So I don't know, I'm kind of a newer quilter. So for me, I kind of felt really comfortable with this method. I felt like this could be something that you could do while you're watching TV with your family even. Just kind of trace around them and cut them. And you wouldn't even necessarily have to have a table and a rotary cutter. You could almost kind of even do this on like a TV tray stand. I don't know, just something that I thought was worth mentioning because um, maybe 
you know, it'd be a good little on the go kind of way of cutting your quilt blocks and having them ready to go. All right, now it's time to sew. We're gonna take the top letter B and we're gonna stitch those together. Make sure you adjust your stitch length to 1.8 and go ahead and use a quarter of an inch seam allowance. You can clip your threads and make sure you open your seams, press them. You could go to an ironing board and press them. You could also just use your fingers to press them or you could even use a pressing tool. It's entirely up to you. But go ahead and sew all the quarter of inch seam allowances for these particular letter B template pieces. And now it's time to add that curve, the clamshell part. And this is kind of intimidating. I haven't made a curve like this in a very long time. And the idea is to not use pins and to just line up those little slits, the little hash marks so sorry my hands are in the way but this you still kind of get an idea i am just aligning the little slits together from my a and b and i'm stitching at the quarter of an inch seam allowance i did have to adjust my presser foot like lift it up and readjust my fabric every once in a while but for the first one i was really pleased with how quickly it came together and when i got to the very end it was perfect so quite honestly, I was really impressed. I, I don't know. I didn't know how it was going to turn out. And then I was really, I was really proud of myself. I was doing a little dance here at the end, but look at this, my very first ever attempt and it's perfect. So you're just going to want to press this. Now I did use my by Annie stiletto and presser. Um, this is just a great little tool. I'll have a link in the description so that you can watch a video on how exactly this is used and all of its benefits too, but it's a nice little handy presser. Now let's do the next clamshell and just repeat this as often for as many of these little clamshells as you want. You're just going to kind of follow the instructions in the little booklet it comes with and just continue the process. Again, the idea is to not have to use straight pins or even clips. You just align the little slits for A and B. Now my second one here, you'll see that I used my stiletto and boy, did it make a difference. I was able to go much faster and everything lined up perfect again, but it just was a little bit easier. So if you do have a stiletto or one of these by Annie pressing tools and stilettos, they're definitely kind of helped it out. What's cool is on one side, it's a pressing tool and the other side is just a stiletto. So it's kind of like a two in one notion. At this point, I went ahead and pressed this at the ironing board, and when I came back, it was time to add my second row of clamshell. I'm doing this with a really beautiful yellow print. This is by Krista Watson of Krista Quilts, and this fabric is called Geo Pop. It is stunning. I really love it. It's going to be really pretty when this quilt is all finished. Again, just taking advantage of that stiletto as needed is really useful when trying to keep everything aligned. And look at this, <laughs> again, this is now my third clamshell I've made and no puckers, it lays perfectly flat. I am super, so, so super excited. <laughs> it lined up great. And there we go, we're just gonna go to the ironing board and give this a press. I used a little bit of steam, but quite honestly, it all had laid out so nicely. It's just really great. I'm really proud of myself. And remember, it comes with this handy little instruction booklet showing you what to do. And I did all of this with these two little templates. Now I'm excited to go back to the website and see what other templates I want to play with. So what did you think of that? I mean, remember, I'm not like in a really advanced quilter. I'm what you call like an accidental quilter. So the way I look at it is if I can do it, you certainly can do it. 
please give it a chance. And remember, it's from beginner to advanced. So don't feel like you can't do it because yeah, I already know how to do it. Give it a try, it's super easy. Now you're probably wondering where can you get your very own slit and sew templates? Well, you can always support the original inventor and designer and there is a link in the description below which will bring you right to their website. But you can also walk into your local quilt shop and say, hey, I saw this really cool thing and I think you all should sell it. And then they can buy them directly too and have them in your local quilt shop and have like a nice variety of them too. And if you like this video and wanna see more videos like it, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up. And if you wanna win your very own set, go ahead and leave a comment below telling me what do you think you're gonna use it with? Which color material you're gonna use it with? And which one would you like to see in your own personal sewing stash? And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, join my weekly newsletter, go ahead and follow me on Instagram, and of course, come have fun with us over at my Facebook fan club. And until I see you next time, I hope you have a creative day. Bye-bye. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe below. And don't forget, you can also follow me on Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook. Have a creative day. Bye-bye.